Good afternoon. I am excited to have Mr. Jordan Schmaltz with me here today. Jordan, other than being an entrepreneur, was a first round draft pick in 2012 uh, in the NHL draft, St. Louis Blues, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. All right. Yeah. Hey, look at those yep, the Terminator yep, over yep. there, man. He looks yep. like he looks like Sinjin Smith from uh, from 1987. <laughs> oh. Man, I'll tell you what, that's an intro. Um, we're going to get into butter because I'm really, really excited to talk about that. Um, but let's talk real quick about uh, who you are and uh, and how you got involved with hockey. Yeah. So, you know, obviously growing up just outside of Madison, Wisconsin, played all sports growing up, played hockey, played football, played golf, did track and Hockey, for whatever reason, was always the biggest one or the one I liked the most, the one my younger brother, Nick, who plays for the Coyotes, liked the most. So, yeah, like you said, we would be in the back backyard. We'd be, you know, there was a pond nearby where we could kind of go skate. And even in our basement, our parents made like this hockey room with a couple nets. It was basically like a soundproof wall that was just below the garage, like a, an attachment <laughs> off the garage. So we'd go down there and I have one blades on and play one-on-one -on -one and I would beat the piss out of him, like you said, because I was the older brother. I always had the height on him. I still do. I think I'm yeah. probably the better looking one, but just don't tell him that. Um, so yeah, no, it was great. We, uh, we played all the way growing up. We played our, actually our younger days, our youth hockey for the majority of the years we spent in Chicago because that was one of the better teams. So our parents were shuttling us down there on the caravan, like twice, three times, four times a week. That was about a two hour drive one way. So, and wow. they were both working full-time jobs. I mean, my dad, an entrepreneur himself, he had health clubs. He was running this place called Acceleration Madison back in the day, which was to train young athletes, train professionals. So he was doing that. My mom is a medical doctor. She's a radiologist. So they were both working full-time. They'd get off work about three or four o'clock, pick us up from school. We'd grab a little, you know, noodles and company, some to eat Panera bread and, and hit the road, <laughs> hit I-90, yeah. head south down to Naperville. So that was our life for probably five or six years. And then I went over to Green Bay in the USHL, which is a junior league. It's a top junior league before college. And I spent time there. Nick played there as well a couple of years uh, after me because he's about two years younger. So that was cool. I got a little bit of cup of coffee with him there as a uh, he played with us as like a 15 year old. The one year I was a senior in high school, he was a sophomore. So, yeah, we spent time there and then on to North Dakota where we played. And, um, you know, both being first round draft picks, I was drafted by the Blues 25th overall. He was drafted by the Chicago Blackhawks. We spent one year at North Dakota together before I ultimately turned pro after my junior year. And I played nine years professionally. I spent time in the minors with the with the Blues, as well as playing up top with them for probably three odd years. I was a lot of times that I was in the stands or they kept me in the locker room. That's probably where I was best in the locker room at that point, right? Getting the boys going. <laughs> Maybe the night before having a little red wine at dinner. So, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. 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 So my uh, my time over here didn't shake out as as best or what I kind of envisioned it to be, right? I thought I was going to be a 10, 15 year pro. I was a high draft pick. For whatever reasons, it didn't really work out. I, think, I don't think I had the greatest opportunity and maybe I didn't seize the the minutes I was getting. So I played seven years over here and then I spent two years overseas. I spent one year in Helsinki, Finland, where the sun sets at about 2 p.m. and you're looking at your watch, you're like, Oh boy. I don't know if I can go to the Christian bar. Rutu. Christian Rutu's native home. Yeah, exactly. But you're looking at your phone there, Dono, and you're looking at your phone, it's two o'clock or your watch, and you're like, the sun's set. I can't go to the bar yet. It's only Tuesday and I'm going <laughs> at three o'clock. So that was a lot of fun right. though. The pe the people there were awesome. The the sauna yeah. culture, the uh the ice bath, the plunge, like they, that's like legitimate there. They they are the people that sauna the best in the world. These guys would be loading up the sauna with beers and getting after it in there and so yeah it was cool and then last year I was in Switzerland so that was a, that was a cool experience as well but I kind of ended with an injury I was out with a uh, concussion for about nine months last year I kept trying to come back I wasn't okay. feeling great I'd get on the ice I'd get dizzy or I'd have a vertigo like symptoms and yeah. I was all out of whack so I, I ultimately came back here like in like last January probably right around this time the season goes a little shorter there it starts earlier ends a little earlier so I was the season was almost wrapped up, and I wasn't able to get myself to a point where I felt really good. So I came back here, did some rehab, did about two months of work, now feeling great. But it really made me real, kind of reevaluate what I wanted to do. And okay. now I'm here, and I, I launched that company, Butter Golf, which is uh, – I kind of had launched it before. I just went over to, to Switzerland in 2022. So, yeah, this is where we're at now, and I'm in the desert, posted up in Scottsdale, and uh, I'm enjoying it. It's a new ride, and – in media doing different things with the coyotes here some stuff at north dakota 
in terms yeah. of some color work and some panel work and uh, these live shows that I'm doing right now with uh, with a buddy that we're actually going to Calgary next week. So, yeah, I'm fired up. Yeah. It's, a, it's a new venture and uh, I'm hitting it with, uh, you know, full steam, as I would say. Yeah, bro. Listen, you 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 definitely have uh, the gift of of being able to speak fluently and um, like I said, man, I kind of like the vibe that that you that you bring. And you know, it's interesting. You're what, 27 years old? I'm 30. Oh, you're 30? Okay, yep. 30. Just turned 30 a couple months ago. Okay. okay, is maybe your brother might be 27? Yeah, yeah, he'll be yeah. 28 in February next month. So okay. yeah, yeah. Apologies. So I knew it. you're still a young man. I'm old. I'm a 45 year old. So in any event, um, you still, you know, you could definitely be playing, right? And and it's funny that you said, hey, you know, I finally feel good. Um, I'm, I'm feeling good. And then I just kind of realized that you don't want to do it anymore, right? Yeah. You've kind of been there, done that kind of thing. Exactly. Let's, let's not sell yourself short, man. You, you played professional hockey. Like this isn't something you said, you know, kind of cup of coffee or, or jokingly said in the stands. Um, when you're drafted in the first round, right at, at 25 overall, you're a stud, right? There's no way, there's no other way to say that. So, I mean, um, I know you're being humble and you're being modest, but let's be honest, you were, you were a phenomenal hockey player and I've gone back and I've watched and I've seen, and you were a phenomenal hockey player. I mean, my son, um, plays travel hockey now. Right. And I had him watch some highlights of you and, you know, he was like, dude, this, you know, he was real stoked that you were coming on because, and, and, and he watched you play. So like, it's not. I know how you're trying to spin it, but trust yeah. me, man, you know, you, you yeah. were there and you should be very, very proud of what, uh, what you've accomplished oh, as I'm sure you are, you know, for sure. Yeah. You look back at it and I can even kind of digest it. I'm still t- trying to work through that in terms of, but no, I, I'm at peace with it. I'm happy. And like yeah. I say, I tell all the boys when I'm on the golf course, you know, if I hit a nice flop shot, Hey fellas, those are first round mitts right there. You know, <laughs> you can't teach that. Right. So, or, <laughs> so that's what, you know, I, I am humble in a sense, but I, I do got to bring that kind of that swag and, and just funny yeah. jokes to it. Right. So yeah. Hey boys, those are well, first round mitts right there. You don't have those. Those, those are undrafted hands. Over there. Come over here, baby. Right. I got the, you got to let them know about it, man. Yeah, you got to exactly. let them know. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, you know, I, I had a, a Buffalo, a, a local Buffalo kid. His name is Joey Muldowney. He was drafted okay. last year by the uh, by the San Jose Sharks. Um, yep. He was a sixth round pick. And then we had a no, another local Buffalo boy, uh, Quentin Musty, who was a first round pick in just this past draft. Right. I haven't spoken to Quentin yet. Um, I will shortly. But I spoke to Joey. And it's interesting what you had just said about North Dakota and then how you turned pro. Right. So. Did the Blues have the rights to you when you were drafted, correct? They had the rights to you. You went and played a year at Dakota, and then they said, okay, it's time to come to us? Yeah. Right. 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 Let yourself marinate a little bit, a little, little Shabbat seasoning. Um, right. I, I think that's, you know, the way you just described that it's, it's tough and you have to feel a lot of pressure being a first round pick, you know, like Joey's a sixth round pick. And again, I'm not taking anything away from that either, but being a first round pick, I would think as an 18 year old kid or 19 year old kid, that's gotta be tough mentally, man. That's, that's gotta be a lot of pressure, right? Where you almost feel like you got to live up, you got to live up to expectations of being a first round pick. So while you're sitting there marinating and, and doing whatever, and just trying to have a good time, because that's what it really should be about. 
you know, in the back of your mind, there's always this, oh man, you know, am I living up to, to the hype and what everybody expected from me and stuff. Right. I mean, did you ever feel that way? Did it, did it kind of cut into the time you were having at North Dakota or were you just living in the moment and having fun? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Screwing with your head. Yeah. Right. That's what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. They were stacked. They were stacked. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Right, right. Yeah, man, you, you teed that answer off perfectly. That that thing went 360 in the air. That was a great answer, and I like your philosophy on that. Um, and I believe one thing that I noticed that you had said was the system and just kind of, I believe, personally, hockey may be the number one sport with right time, right place. You know, football, think about it. When you're drafted football, 18 years old, man, you're playing next year, right? You're the QB, you're the running back. They're drafting, you're playing next year. Basketball, same kind of thing. Baseball, you can go up and it takes time, right? But hockey is just right place, right time. So the Buffalo Sabres are a perfect example of that where, um, and I love them, right? Patty Coletta, right? He was on the show. He's a great dude. Uh, but he, he, you know, drafted a little bit later and had the opportunity to play for the Sabres when the teams for years weren't in any type of playoff run, right? Like they, were, they weren't chasing anything. It was developmental. He was a local boy, you know, so it was great for the fans to see. And he was so scrappy. I mean, if you heard that guy's records, they're awesome as far as these crazy, weird records that he still holds in the NHL with agitating people. Um, you know, and, and even Robbie Ray, right? Like, like I had Robbie on and, 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 you know, he was a good example as well. Like almost some of the NHL guys I've had on didn't think they were going to, to make it, you know, but circumstance and timing is why they did. So, um, you know, you, you hit on that real, real well. And, and again, I think you've had an amazing career. The Finland thing is crazy. Now that's not all year round, right? Is that, is that their winter? It's two o'clock dark. Yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. 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 All right. Hold up. Okay. <laughs> Okay. 
practice. Well, thank you. That's what I was thinking right off the jump, man. Like, you know, Alaska uh, has that, uh, that tendency a little bit. And it's like, you know, alcoholism's at this crazy rate there and everything else. And, you know, I, and, and I guess let's answer that question. What are these people doing? Are they just partying? Or like, how is it over there as far as like, you got me on Finland now, bro. You, you nailed me here now. Like, how, is, it, is it fun as far as the, the, the atmosphere and the lifestyle? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight up savages. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I was going to mention that. Yeah, yeah. How were I I figured maybe you found a nice Nordic bride. You were already t you were already tied up before you went out there? Ah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say, where, where are you ranking the honey babies? The honey babies are right up there in Finland. All right, let's not get ourselves in. Let's not get ourselves in too much trouble here when the wives are watching. So shout out to Finland. We'll leave it at that. Shout out to Finland. Let's talk some butter, baby. Let's talk butter, baby. All right. So tell me all about it right from the Genesis. I'm super excited to talk about this. Um, I'm kind of one of those nerds when it comes to, you know, clothing lines and entrepreneurialism and, and just all of that, man. It's just, it's my grind. So tell me, um, tell me about it, how it started. Um, is it just you? How's it going? Go ahead. They have, yeah, yeah. Yeah.
throw in a timeout. Time timeout on the field. Timeout on the field. When in the Swiss Alps, did you at any point ever pretend you were in a Ricola commercial with one of those big long things and do the Ricola? Ricola. Did you ever at any point do that? Not a fun. You don't like the, you don't like the scalding hot cheese. You know what? Some people like to pour it all over themselves, and and there's 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 a cult. There's a whole cult with fondue, and it's scalding hot, and they want to just drizzle it off each other's bodies. So it's a whole nother world. Just chomp it, chomp it up. <laughs> yes. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Sure. Sure. So I, I dig it 100%. Um, I, uh, you've heard of Waggle, right? So Waggle was just, I start, I, I, I liked the hats, right? With the rooster on them. Um, and I didn't even realize that that was, you know, like Waggle golf, right? I just saw the hat. I checked it out. I liked it. So I think a lot of the marketing and, and that's why I think you're going to be very successful with what you're saying is the crossover there with the lingo. I mean, even calling the different apparel. Um, uh, and again, you know, I don't know if you do this or not. I'll be honest. I have not been on your site yet. I wanted to talk to you first um, because I wanted to get the whole vibe of it. Uh, you will see quite a few orders from D. Scott. I'll be like my wife when she's on Amazon buying stuff. There'll be just boxes showing up to the house here. Um, but the waggle, you know, like I said, just got me on, on the rooster alone. But I think, and I don't, do you do this where you integrate, say, a line uh, might be called uh, the lettuce, right? Or something like that where you're integrating hockey lingo? That's cool. That's cool. And I didn't know if you did that or not, but seeing the way your brain works, um, you know, I think that would be really smart too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 No, I love it, dude. I, I love the whole, the whole culture is amazing to me. And, and you know, what's great, man, is kids, is kids do it now. Right. So, you know, my son, half the stuff he's saying, you know, he'll, he'll go and play at a, at a tournament. We're going to Cleveland this weekend, a hockey tournament, you know, and, and he'll come back with a new word that I didn't know existed, you know, because the, the hockey culture just comes up with them, man. And I, I absolutely love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nobody can do it like hockey cats man nobody can nobody can rival it are you where can everybody find butter right now is it uh just website driven right now are we looking at storefronts is it uh demographically right now are we spreading out so i'll i'll do a little name drop and like i had johnny damon on right and he was trying to promote a game which is his his energy drink and I couldn't find it, man. I had to go, uh, you know, I had to go online. I ended up having to get a case of it, right? Dropped off at the house and 
next thing I know, I'm, I'm in the, the A game for $100 because I was just trying to try it, you know, and it was hard to get. Um, how accessible is butter right now? What's your main source? Is it online shopping or? You know what it looks like? The, D, the D12 logo. Remember Eminem and D12? That's what, and I, yeah, I saw it and I'm like, man, that's a sweet hat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's rad, man. And I can tell you, Buffalo might not be absolutely known for its uh, its golf um, as far as climate wise, climate wise. But there's enthusiasts here like you can't imagine. I mean, I have friends who literally, you know, from all levels that will go out, uh, you know, and they'll play 36. So it's crazy. Golf is crazy in, in Buffalo. And there's a really a lot of, you know, there's a lot of nice courses. Rochester has Oak Hill, which is absolutely gorgeous. You know, they do the tours there and stuff. So um, my golf career, uh, I'm going to be getting your stuff straight up and down for the look of it and to wear it because my golf career, having three boys under 10 years old, it's on a little bit of a hiatus right now. Not much golfing being done, man. Little hard to get out. Yep. Oh, okay. All right. See? All right. We got to talk name dropping. All right. I, I see what you're doing here. I love it, man. I love it. So you've been to Buffalo? Okay. Yeah. Well, get out of here. Oh, we will 100 we will 100% reconvene then. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have some really cool ideas too. We'll talk about that after, but that's that's rad, man. That's great. Thank you so much, Jordan, for taking the time. Um, this was a pleasure. This was cool. Uh, really nice talking to you. And I'm glad that I'm going to be able to promote butter a little bit for you. And uh, thanks for coming on and, and taking the time with me. Very cool. All right, man. Take care. Have a great day.